The story of District 6 has many facets, including the unwillingness of whites in power to accept and acknowledge the humanity of the people who lived there. That's only part of the story because within the community itself, people whose gender identity didn't fall within the conventional definitions of the time found themselves defying narrow-mindedness in addition to apartheid. One of them went by the name of QP, who donated a fascinating collection of photographs to the Gay and Lesbian Archives, or GALA. A selection of prints were on exhibition recently, and Karusha went to see the works and get the background story. The exhibition completed a highly successful run at the District 6 Homecoming Centre in Cape Town before moving to Josie. It is a beautiful afternoon in Johannesburg, and I'm at the opening of QP, daughter of District 6 exhibition at the Market Theatre. Although the story has the backdrop of forced removals in South Africa, it is a wonderful story about resilience, a zest for life, style and community. Derived from Cupid, Cupid was the brand name of a cute kind of doll and it was the identity assumed by a striking member of what today would be called the LGBTQTI community in District 6 in the 1950s. As someone who didn't conform to male-female stereotypes, Cupid was already an outsider, but this didn't deter her from crossing barriers of gender and race. If I felt like walking into a white place, I just walked in. If they had to stop me, they had to stop me. No one ever stopped me. It isn't easy to appreciate Cupid's lifestyle and choices from a contemporary perspective, so the Gala archives have made a particular effort to place the images in context. What's amazing about this board is it almost kind of traces what District 6 was and the kind of queer spaces within the history of District 6. Kivel, you've used the word queer. I know historically that word has a derogatory meaning. What does it mean now? You're right, in so many ways it's been kind of reclaimed by the LGBTIQ community. This is the importance of this exhibition. It is about reclaiming not only these words, but this collective history to know that we have always existed. And QP is one of those icons that really shows that. So something that was used to disempower is now used to empower. Particularly because we know that there's still very high levels of violence against lesbian women and trans people. And so this idea that there's this history and this belonging and this icon that we can all look up to and revere is important in today's times, spreading this message of humanity and also sharing this powerful story. I know that these photos were taken during the time of forced removals in South Africa. But the photos are so vibrant. The photos in the exhibition really provide you with a glimpse into Cupid's life and that of her sisters within the District 6 community and this relative form of acceptance, which is a really powerful message for today. Even during the darkest times, even during a time when there was clamped down and forcible removals, I think the message was we're never going to go anywhere, we're going to always be here. What is the significance of having an exhibition like this? There's still so many people who are kicked out of their homes just for being who they are. And so we're hoping by putting on this exhibition that we can speak to this message of one acceptance, one of celebration, and the one of just being who you are and being accepted for who you are. While the images are historically and aesthetically fascinating, their value also lies in the human story they tell, as exhibition head Tina Smith explained. Tina, what is the significance of this exhibition? It's an extraordinary exhibition. It's an extraordinary story. It touches on the humanness in us, our vulnerabilities, our struggles, our sense of belonging. QP celebrated life. So this exhibition is a celebration of that legacy of Cupid's life. And are those the main themes of the exhibition? Cupid and her friends lived in a time during forced removals and apartheid, but Cupid in that environment of District 6 managed to live beyond that space. They created their own space of being individuals and being themselves. And that's an important message that we want to tell young and old. It is about your expression of being yourself. for the dress code is legendary and from the looks of it people have not disappointed. I'm gonna go chat to them. You look incredible! Look at you! Thank you. <laughs> Tell me about this outfit. Uh, well I'm South African Indian so I thought of using African print material to tie a sari. So you tied the sari yourself? Yes I did. Okay come to my house <laughs> <laughs> and help me you look incredible. Well it, it always helped uh, growing up watching my granny tie her sari I'm like okay that's how you do it. Mm -hmm. 
client basically here to honor QP and also her life and what she believed in. It's beautiful to be in a space where he's celebrated because we often forget about the people that pay forward for how we are living right now. As much as we celebrate people, then we must realize there are still people who are being discriminated against and what a good way to market. This shows me that we need to do a lot more to fast track the way in which people are able to live freely. Smoky vocals segueing from a slow burn to a flaring flame captured the style and mood of QB's world. Although QB and his sisters found themselves in the midst of apartheid's fierce rule, their story was one of love, hope and togetherness, which is why it's still relevant today. This event was a celebration, a coming together, finding one's own identity and embracing each other. My son is uh, involved in it and I want to support him and I want it to open to our community and accept them exactly the way they are. Because they are special people and when you embrace them then you see how beautiful it is. And to me that is very important.